Okay, this is my jetting calculator, and I want to show you how it works and teach you something about jetting, hopefully that you didn't already previously know. This takes in all the data concerning the carburetor and the jets and the needle and the air screw and everything. And over here, the red graph plots the richness of the uh, jetting according to how how it relates to where it should be from 1 8 throttle all the way to wide open throttle so at 1.00 is the ideal this means if that red graph runs horizontally along this line then it is just right in this case you can see it's horribly down it's all the way down to 55 percent of where it should be at one quarter throttle and why is that? Because this is a carburetor that I received with the uh, needle jet hole diameter smaller than what it should be. It's a VM18 by McCooney, and if you see right here the specs, it says the uh, needle jet should be an O0. If you look up here, O0 is 2.6 millimeters hole diameter. And when I took it out and measured it, it was 2.55, which means they gave me the wrong one. And this is the result. So, I've got the right one on order. And looky there. It gives me a really nice graph. So, this, um, having a calculator like this, it's, it's handy. It can show you things before you really completely figure it out to help you uh, help you get there. Okay, let's just go over some of the basics. Um, the idle jet. I'm going to show you the changes in the graph by changing the idle jet to give you an idea of what the full range of its effects are. Okay, did you see that? it went down it got leaner as I changed that from 25 to 10 all the way up to just before half throttle okay let's go up to uh, 40 ah, interesting it had a lot more effect going down than it did up Uh -huh. Well, it still had an effect up to one half because this is the original. This is 25. So it's going to straighten this part out by raising this right here and then bring that up. So it's going to run just like that and make this all right here look flat. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, okay. So that's the idle jet. Um, air screw. Let's put it at 2.5 from 1.5. And then go up or go down to 0.5. If you look, it made it richer, like at three quarters throttle. What what some people don't understand is the the idle jet and the air screw have an effect all the way through. At a wide open throttle, now we're reading. 4% uh, above where we should be. Let's go back to 1.5 and it's 2%. So it did a 2% change going from 1.5 to 2.5 at wide open throttle. The idle is always in effect because it's it's always right there. It's always it's always being uh, it's always being acted upon by the suction in the uh, the carb throat. Okay, uh, the slide cutaway. This is very, very neglected. Okay, um, I'm going to tweak this a little bit. Maybe not that much. Okay, so we see that this beginning section needs to be richer. 
and the more the slide is cut away the leaner it is okay so let's go from two to zero wow it really had an effect at uh, one eighth throttle at three eighths it's now one percent above where it should be and before it was uh, eleven percent below so it had a pretty it had over a ten percent effect at three eighths yeah so yeah the slide cutaway affects all that beginning section right there this calculator is set up for Mikuni, Kihine, and Del Orto. Even though you can use it for basically any carburetor. I wanted to show you something. Okay, this Del Orto, which is the VHSB 34 on an Aprilia RS125, is, is about as perfect as you can get. I love it. This right here is, is the uncorrected uh, richness from one eighth to full throttle. And you see it's not a straight line, and I wanted to explain why. Uh, one eighth is basically like, you know, off throttle, you're, you're just idling. And wide open throttle is there's you can't accelerate anymore okay so you're not going to accelerate here and because when you're riding you're, you're never at close throttle and you're not going to accelerate here because that's the maximum so but anywhere in between you can accelerate you can open the throttle more and when you do that the rpm doesn't automatically adjust and so uh, it takes a while for it to go up and so it's best to have this be a little bit richer. The fact that it's up means it's richer. If that curve went downward like this, it would be leaner. So this is a little bit richer, a little bit more ready for that instant acceleration without having a fuel pump. Um, the basics of this calculator, let me explain this real quick, is... Um, I found the graphs that showed that uh, the air velocity through the carburetor and the suction that's causing that velocity have a linear relationship. So if you double the suction, you double the velocity. So basically, by using the, uh, the, the carb velocity, I'm able to know what the carb suction is in a relative way without actually knowing the PSI. And another relationship that's linear is the relationship of uh, fuel flow area to um, the actual flow. So by knowing the velocity and, and the different sections of the carburetor and knowing the, uh, the area that the fuel is flowing through, I'm able to graph and, and uh, know if it's too rich or too lean. Okay, so this is probably a better example to go by. If you increase the idle jet, we went up from 1.0 to 1.112 wide open throttle. So that increased the uh, the jetting by 11% at wide open throttle. And now at wide open throttle it's reduced by 8%. But you see the, the major effect is at the beginning and then it tapers off, tapers off, tapers off. But it's still, there's some effect there. That's why you always start with the the idle jetting. That's your reference point.
Everything else builds upon that. Okay. Then you go to the side cutaway. You can see this the slide cutaway has made an effect all the way to about three quarter throttle. And in this case about half throttle. Uh, next, you would be dealing with the height of the uh, needle. And on this calculator, it's this number right here in millimeters. And you transfer that to the needed section by clicking on this button right here. And you see it caused our nice flat graph to get a hump in it. Let's, let's see if we can get it to go in the opposite direction. Yep. So up until just a little bit before wide open throttle and just past close throttle, the needle height has an effect. Well, you probably already knew that. So, um, but what you're most often told is an oversimplification of the truth. And the oversimplification is that the idle affects just this area here, the needle affects just this area here, and the main jet affects just this area here. But that's totally, totally untrue. Hardly even can say it's partially true because it's not uh, true at all because everything overlaps as I've been showing you it's you know even the idle it affects wide open throttle let's look at the change in the graph with uh, main jet change let's see how much that affects Oh, well, looky here. From close throttle all the way on up, the main jet effects. Why? Let me see if I can find the drawing. When this carb is all the way down, and there's this little opening here, and you're mostly relying on the idle jet, there's still some gas coming up here and going and adding into that idle jet uh, flow. There's some space between the, the straight part of the needle and the uh, needle jet. So the, uh, the, let me backtrack here. The needle jet and the main jet work together. The needle jet isn't fully in charge when its area is smaller than the main jet and the main jet isn't fully in when its area is the limiting area they both overlap even a wide open throttle the uh, the area between the needle and the needle jet has some effect because it is still a flow restriction even though it's very minor and so even way down here, you have some effect from the, the main jet and the needle jet, as you just saw when I uh, increased that main jet size. Now I'm going to go small. And again, you see that the effect goes all the way back to close throttle. On this velocity calculator, I want to show you something. As you raise the carburetor size, the carb flow velocity is going to go down from 32.7, in this case, to 25.8. So, um, I don't know if you knew that, but yeah, the bigger they make the carb, the lower the, the velocity goes. And that velocity affects 
affects the jetty. Okay, this is what I want to present to you. The uh, velocity times the jet area equals the jetting richness. Okay, so in, able, in order to maintain the same uh, the same level of jetting, you if you increase the velocity or decrease the velocity, you have to make the the opposite changes to the jet area. In this case, if you um, If you decrease the velocity by 10% with a 2 millimeter larger carb from 34 millimeter to 36 millimeter, you've got to increase the jet flow area by 10% to maintain the same jet richness. And if you, um, you increase the velocity, let's say by... Um, let's say by a higher RPM then you're gonna to have to lower the jetting area because with the higher RPM you get more suction and with the same jets you'll it'll pull up too much fuel and it'll be too rich Okay, uh, I don't know what else I want to show you. This calculator is nice in that it also does, it, it incorporates the, uh, the elevation, the percent of ethanol in the fuel, the temperature, the humidity, and the fuel oil ratio. So, um, without getting into the specifics about how to, uh, to enter the data for the needle. I'm just going to leave it at that because I just wanted to show, to, to give an overview of how extensive an effect each one of these has. And I think you'd have to be like Albert Einstein to be able to get, to be able to really dial in the jetting without a jetting calculator. I mean, this all the variations I've seen. I was stumped. I was stumped on my Suzuki 100 street bike. I just I couldn't figure it out. And I had been, you know, I'd been tuning two strokes for many years. And that's the reason I made this calculator to help myself out mainly. So, it really showed me uh, why it was doing what it was doing, which in that case was uh, the maximum amount of flow through the needle jet was achieved too early, which was obvious by looking at the graph, but was not obvious in real life. It was just a head scratcher. Okay, my friends, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you for watching.